Sai Ram. Welcome to Sri Satya Sai Lok Seva Gurukulam online classes. Let's learn English series with Mrs. Kalpana Hebleko. So today we are going to learn about irregular and strong verbs. Okay. So let us see what are irregular and strong verbs. An irregular verb is one that does not form its simple past tense or its past participle by adding ed, t or d to the base form. Okay. An irregular verb is one that does not form its simple past tense or its past participle by adding ed, t or d to the base form. Now let us see. Irregular verbs do not follow the regular pattern of past tense and past participle. Okay. Irregular verbs each have their own unique tense forms and partic past participles. Now let us see the definition of strong verbs. Strong verbs are verbs in which the vowel in the stem is changed to indicate tenses. Example, okay, present tense, simple past tense and past participle. By now we know all this, okay. So no need of explaining again and again. If you want, then you can just, you know, if you are getting confused, go to the previous lessons and just check yourself, okay. Sing, sang, sung. See now, strong verbs are verbs in which the vowel in the stem is changed to indicate tenses. So, vowel, what is this? S I N G. Okay. So, I is changed. Now, your sang will come and then your sung. Okay. Yes. Then, here the stem vowel I changes to a to a in the simple past and to you in the past participle. So, your, your is simple past, it turns. See, I will become A and I will become you in the past participle. Okay. Now, strong verbs. Let us see the definition of strong verbs. Strong verbs were given their name because they are strong enough to create their own endings. They don't need the usual endings like ED, D or T like in weak verbs. Okay. So, this is very clear. Let me read again. Strong verbs were given their names because they are strong enough to create their own endings. They don't need the usual endings like ED, D or T like in weak verbs. Okay. Very clear, right? Okay. Let us see in the example. Now, present tense, simple past tense and past participle, okay. Bite, B-I-T-E, bite. Simple past tense will be bit, B-I-T, bit. And past participle will be bitten, B-I-T-T-E-N, bitten. Present tense will be sink for another word, sink, S-I-N-K, sink. Simple past tense will be sank, S-A-N-K, sank. Past participle will be sunk, S-U-N-K, sunk, okay. Present tense, grow, G-R-O-W, grow. Simple past tense will be grew, G-R-E-W, grew. Past participle will be grown, G-R-O-W-N, okay. Now, how to identify an irregular verb from the other regular verbs? Let us see. Okay, the common identification of irregular verbs from other verbs is by putting the verb in its simple past or and past participle form. Okay, now let us see. This is very important, so you pay attention. How to identify an irregular verb from the other regular verbs? Okay. The common identification of irregular verbs from the other verbs is by putting the verb in its simple past and past participle form. Okay. Now, if the verb changes its stem vowel in the simple past and past participle, 
then it is an irregular verb okay now let us see this chart earlier i had mentioned that i will be showing you a chart just see here we are going to learn about regular irregular strong and weak verbs okay so now this part that is the green color it shows the regular verbs and weak verbs okay and this part will show the irregular verbs strong verbs so let us see this chart regular irregular strong and weak verbs okay now weak verbs past form ends with ed d or t that we all know okay with or without a base change and here we are talking about strong verbs which don't have or end with ed d or t okay but only there will be the structural change in between okay so here and there it will be changed i'll explain you change will happen over here okay there will be a base change for example begin will become began b e g a n began and begun b e g u n dig will become dug and dug again okay now we will see what are regular verbs now regular verbs definition is the past form that is in the past form the base form plus ed so we are adding ed and d okay to the verb to make it in the past form for irregular verbs the past form is there so see now what is happened your past form means base plus ed it is not required okay or d is also not required now let us see what it is so play played work worked will come as a regular verb okay and now we already gave examples of begin and dig now let us see okay some irregular verbs which are having ending at p that is it will become t kept kept bleed will become bled bled t will become t set set because these three verbs that is keep will become kept k e p t and kept bleed will become bled set will become set it ends with t d and t it will come under the weak verb now weak verbs end with d e d or t in their simple past and past participle strong verbs don't end with d e d or t in their simple past and past participle okay so we have seen in the previous chart itself okay so now if the verb changes its stem vowel in the simple past and past participle then it is an irregular verb some irregular verbs are weak and some are strong so we have done that also that kept set all that okay regular verbs from their simple past and past participle forms just by adding d ed or t to the base form all regular verbs are weak verbs but not all weak verbs are regular verbs so this is very clear in that chart okay let me read again weak verbs end with d ed or t in their simple past and past participle strong verbs don't end with d ed or t in their past simple past and past participle okay is it clear okay if the verb changes its stem vowel in the simple past and past participle then it is an irregular verb some irregular verbs are weak and some are strong okay regular verbs form their simple past and past participle forms just by adding d ed or t to the base form all regular verbs are weak verbs but not all weak verbs are regular okay so i think this is very clear to you with the diagram yes again and again keep the diagram with you and keep thinking of it so once or twice if you think it will come right okay so thought for the day for loud reading and handwriting practice okay let us see the supreme divinity which is simply the pure consciousness that is pervading every part of the creation 
is known as parabrahman or paramatma and the individual consciousness in all is referred to as jivatma or simply atman if you think of a bucket of water in a tank of water the water in the bucket and in the tank is the same but is known differently due to its presence in different containers this is the crux of all the teachings of sanatana dharma this is said by sadguru shri madhusudan sai so thank you for watching shri satya sai lok seva gurukulam online classes let's learn english series i pray to god to keep all of you happy and prosperous in all your future endeavors thank you sairam